We um, start up. <coughs> I'm just checking the sound here. Sound is okay. <coughs> Today um, we are going to look into uh, shock waves and we are trying to make it a little bit more physical so you can actually visualize it, you can see it, you can experience it. We are focusing on traffic flow, modeling cars, car traffic. And we do this very, very simple. So <coughs> I found a model in a book by Levesque from uh, 2002, and he describes it sort of straightforward. And uh, you will be given this PDF file uh, later on, by the way, so you don't have to copy it. What I wanted to look at there was this very nice uh, figure that he has. <coughs> so uh, to the left, you have a discrete simulation. You look at one car at a time and then uh, see how they behave when uh, time uh, goes by. So this actually then the different car positions as a function of time. So initially we have sort of a heap of cars very close together, but then uh, they start to move. It's a one-way street, so you can't move backwards. And then uh, in the end we get up something like this. The density, come back to how we can define that one, sort of uh, how packed the different uh, cars uh, are. And here we are talking actually a shock wave. And this is then I want to duplicate this graph. To the left, he has used uh, his own program, not listed in the book, so we have to make it ourselves. To the right, okay, and then we have a continuous description of the phenomena. That's something else. And here I think he has solved it uh, using uh, some routines from uh, a Clopac uh, subroutine library. I think it's the Guduno method, but I'm not, uh, I'm not certain. It's uh, quite advanced at least, <coughs> so uh, we don't know. But uh, let's try to uh, see what we can get for the same problem. Uh, car traffic, I guess uh, some of you at least, you have a driver license, so you know uh, the problem. And as you all may have experienced, Norwegians does not know how to drive especially when it comes to a, a traffic light. Everybody standing still waiting for the green light. And everybody's looking at the car in front, not at the light. Well, the first car is, but not the rest. So uh, when the car and uh, when the sign changes, becomes green, then the first car starts to move. The next one, he says, ah, the car is moving. Now I can move. Instead of, as it should be, like in the United States, nobody's looking at the car in front. Everybody's looking at the sign. It's green, drive. And then the entire line, the entire queue starts at once. That's the way it's supposed to be. Not so in Norway. No, no. You have to peek at the car in front. Amateurs. But uh, never mind that. <coughs> Let's see. Yeah. We <coughs> will make a very simple model now. So we have car traffic. We are looking at uh, rho being the density of cars. So you might say the number of cars, number of cars uh, per length. <coughs> That's how we will uh, define him, meaning if the density rho is zero, you don't have any cars at all. If the density is one, then it's completely packed. The cars are standing bumper to bumper, uh, so, so uh, he must be between zero and one. Then we make a velocity as a model. How fast uh, can you drive? You drive with a velocity u. And that one will now be a function of the density and also the speed limit. So you have a maximum velocity 
and then we multiply with one minus the density. Meaning, you have no cars on the road, you're alone. Okay, you drive at the speed limit, at least. We keep it uh, at the speed limit. But if it's uh, many cars on the road, you have to sort of pay attention to the one in front of you. But when we look at it discreetly, you only see the car in front. You don't see two cars, three cars in front. You don't plan ahead, you only see the one just in front of you. And you don't care if you have anybody behind you. So a very primitive uh, model, but uh, as you shall see, it actually, actually works. So here we make it uh, very easy. <coughs> U max, one meters per second. Length of uh, one car is one meter, just for simplicity. So uh, the density now as a discrete function then we have to sort of pick one arbitrary individual car, car number k. What's the density for him? Rho for car number k. Well, that one, of course, function of time. This one we are interested in finding. But uh, how can we define the density? Well, remember, he only sees the car in front. So the number of cars sort of given now as, uh, uh, well actually that was uh, maybe not entirely the definition, but uh, more or less, just leave it. So here we will have one meters length of your car divided by the distance x for the car in front of you minus the distance for your car. So x now being the one-dimensional uh, uh, driving direction. So from that one, for a given uh, density distribution, then we can sort of recalculate how are the different car positions. Well, if you know the first car, for k equals 1, we have to start somewhere. Then you can find the next one, and the next one, and the next one. So a little reorganizing here, you'll find uh, position for uh, car k plus 1 has to be uh, equal the old one. And then uh, you add 1 by the density, the local density of your car, the way you see it. So uh, that sort of is a recursively definition for for finding the discrete positions for any car, if we know the density distribution. Now in this article, we have been given this nice uh, function here. I guess the numbers is too small, you can't see it. But it starts roughly at uh, 0.2, and the maximum roughly at, uh, what is it, 0.8 or something. Ah, fairly close to one, actually. So, uh, and then it's sort of wide. The distance in meters go from minus 30 to plus 30. So we'll keep this part of the road as our window. And as time goes by, <coughs> now with a density of 0.2, you will have a positive velocity. <coughs> so uh, they can uh, drive fairly fast, 80% of the speed limit. So the car, they will enter here to the left. But since it's packed here, you have to slow down. So that's uh, actually what's going to, to happen. How can we find now the different uh, positions as time goes by for the individual cars? Well, we can do that fairly straightforward. We know uh, the position. What we are interested in is finding the velocity. So, well, actually not plus one, just the velocity of uh, your car, <coughs> that is u, and then insert your local density. So there you have it. <coughs> and uh, now using our uh, 
definition here. You'll find this one uh, should now equal something like uh, u max multiplied with 1 minus 1 over x k plus 1 minus x k. Something like that. Inserted for the local definition for the density rho. That's it. That's all we need to create a program. So that was sort of the discrete uh, philosophy. Any questions to that one? No? That's okay. So you see the same effect here when you have a queue uh, lining up for a stop sign and then all of a sudden the sign goes green and then all the car starts to move. You can actually see the shock wave moving backwards. First the car starts to move and then the second and the third. There you have a sort of a backward shock wave moving. Or the other way, you have a stream of cars going with a constant velocity and then all of a sudden the signs becomes red, so they start stopping. Then they stop and stop and stop. That's also a so sort of a shock wave. So uh, this is then what we, are want, uh, what we want to, to simulate. So let's, uh, let's try. We start as always, clear all, close all and CLC. I want to mimic the same uh, figure as uh, Levex, so uh, we have minus 30, smallest x, and the biggest one was plus 30. Then we have to define this uh, initial distribution that he had, so uh, I played around with some functions. Here as a function of x. I found uh, 0 0.2 plus 0 0.8 multiply with the exponent of, and then I used minus x divided by 10, and then this one squared. That was a suitable uh, function looking something like the one, uh, the initial distribution that he had for the, for the density. And uh, now my x, big one, equals linear space. And then I want to use from x mean all the way up to x max. So there I should have 100 points uniformly distributed within my window. Just to make uh, a plot here. <coughs> now, <coughs> I want to compare, uh, say, the left part. So here you have three figures, but the middle one is twice as big as, or twice as high as uh, the top and the bottom. So how do you do that in MATLAB? Well, <coughs> you use some functions. First, Defined a figure, figure uh, number one, and then we use subplot. Subplot, there you can divide up your figure in many different smaller uh, graphs. I want in the uh, y direction, I want four, and I only want one in the x direction. So now it's four by one. Why four? Well, the mid one was rather big, so I want that one to be both number two and three. And then you have the top one and the bottom four. So subplot, that's a very nice way to split it up. And I want to plot now the initial state first. That was the bottom part. So that should be number four. So the two first numbers, they sort of describe how, how how do you have how have you organized this figure in subplots in x uh, in y and x direction and then the number you have been choosing so subplot then that's a nice way to design compact figures okay then we plot i want my x and then i want this uh, function i have defined 
the rho density of x. That's it. <coughs> And to make it more neat, we can put up some axes. We know uh, the spans here. We have uh, from x mean, x max in uh, the x direction. We have from 0 to 1 in the y direction. So that should be a neat one. So let's try that one. Okay, we are in the beginning at least. And that one looks uh, fairly nice compared to the one that we had down here. Any questions so far? <coughs> now remember, this is the initial uh, density of cars. Here, as a continuous function, but I, I don't have a continuous function. I have discrete cars. So, I'm not, uh, this is not actually the get off that I want. I don't want it as a continuous function. I want this one sort of as individual points, individual cars. Then we have to use this one. We have to sort of decide how how dense my car should be, and since I have it as one meters, we can then do the following. Let's see. We then say, well, first of all, hold on. Now I want, uh, on top of this continuous curve, I want uh, my individual cars. So then I start x k. That's the individual positions for cars. <coughs> and then I start with the first one. And here I cheat. I say the first one, he is way to the left. My windows was from minus 30 to 30. But here I sort of exaggerate. I start with minus 100. Because as time goes by, the car sort of has to enter from the left. So then I start far to the left. So these, uh, these cars may then or may not enter the window that I'm looking at. That should be okay. <coughs> and then I just start to fill up while, uh, say, the last one for this uh, vector end is uh, smaller than, say, plus 100. Then I can really fill up. So plus 100, sort of unnecessary. I could have used 30, but it really doesn't matter uh, as long as you have a big number there. And then I increase the number of car. So uh, I say, uh, well, first of all, we have to specify my k is 1. And then down here, <coughs> we can say k, e oops. Okay, oh, we can leave it like that, that's okay. We just follow this recipe here. The position for the new car equals the position from the previous one, plus, then I'm going to need the density sort of uh, locally for uh, a given uh, a given car. So there <coughs> I then have to use 1 divided by my function. And then inside here I just put car number k. That should be it. And then I re-increase the k. This is not a nice way to do it. MATLAB doesn't like that, that you create a vector and then you increase the length uh, one every every loop. He doesn't like it. It's uh, slow. 
So normally you should have set up space in memory for, um, for an entire vector and then fill it out. Here it's convenient because I could use uh, xk end as the latest entry inside that vector. He will be increased with one every time here. So uh, that's sort of automatically then uh, stopping the uh, number of, uh, of cars necessary to fill my entire distance from minus 100 to plus 100. So now <coughs> we have an initial car distribution. So we can actually plot this one. We have the xk. That's the uh, x position for all these uh, cars. And then I want to, to plot them versus the local density. So that one now we can just use the R of the local XK. And I don't want that one as a continuous line. I want it as a symbol. So I use um, a red square, something like that. <coughs> Let's see if that one works. There we have it. <coughs> so uh, the car density sort of spread out here. And then uh, when the density increases, they are much more packed. So there I uh, have it. And now the car should start to move. So how do they move? Well then we are definitely going to need this equation. You have to find for each car, solve that equation numerically, and then of course we just use to have a forward Euler step, finding the new position based on the old one, plus delta t times the previous or the old velocity. Uh, I'm going to need the positions here. Um, say the new no, new xk equals the old ones like that. I'm going to need that one in the routine, <coughs> and then we can write as follows: sub plot for one. And now I wanted uh, the mid part. That should cover both two and three. So the notation then will be like this. <coughs> then you have a bigger uh, graph. I wonder if he plots it already. Yeah. So uh, this one now twice as high as that one. Exactly what I need. But we have to fill it with something. <coughs> So uh, here, of course, now I want, this is going to be position. And initially, time equals 0. And that's the exact the same position as we have here. But now it's a function of time. So uh, how to do that one? Well, <coughs> we can start with a simple plot, sort of the initial plot first. Then we have the sentence above, actually, xk, and then versus uh, 0. And uh, here also I will use uh, the red square initially, something like that. <coughs> So here, time equals zero, this is the location for each car. And then we want to simulate it as time goes by. So now we need a for loop. How big should that for loop be? Well, small numbers here, it starts with time equals zero and then up to 25 seconds. So that's my maximum time, 25. <coughs> Tmax equals 25. We need a time step. Ah. Doesn't have to be too accurate. Point 0.1 should do uh, the trick. 
like that. And then we can write something like this for time equal zero, step dt, all the way up to t maximum. Here I use a real number in a for loop. Not so nice, but here it doesn't have to be too accurate. So, so I allow myself to do that. Okay, now adjust all the different uh, cars from one all the way up to the last one. How many do you have? Well, you have the length of your vector xk. So I don't know actually how many I have. Uh, well, I know I have 56, but never mind. That should take all of them now has to be updated but if you look at uh, sort of the the formula here you can't update I mean when you write this one as roughly equal to uh, x k new time minus x k old time by delta t you isolate him this on the other side, then uh, you can't update xk directly because he will then enter when you do the next one. So just to be sure, I have created additional space in the new xk positions of k. <coughs> just to be safe. So the new x positions for uh, car number k equals the old one, x k number k, plus, and then we now need the uh, local velocity, u max was 1, so not, not a problem with him, delta t multiplied with this parenthesis, delta t multiply with, and that should read then something like, uh, what did we use? Ah, uh, yeah, one minus, uh, yes, uh, one divided by, then a big parenthesis, and inside here we now need the difference between those two cars. <coughs> so that should be xk, k plus one, minus xk of k. That one I think should be correct. <coughs> and that one I do for all cars. Uh, even the first and the last one, I really don't care about those because they don't enter into my window anyway. They are from minus 100 and plus 100. So whatever happens to them, not important. <coughs> and then find uh, I found uh, all of them. We update xk equals the new found positions like that. And then we plot. So now we will have the positions xk. And then we have to use time as uh, the y-axis. And then I just want to plot, not the entire symbol is too big, so I just plot a single dot for each car, a blue dot. That should be OK. Uh, before I start this one now, I have to use hold on. And down here, a hold off. Let's see if that one works. No, he didn't. Ah, yes, of course. I can't take the last one there. Then you address k plus 1. So I have to skip the last one. But I mean, he's far away to the right anyway, way outside my uh, local window, so that's okay. <coughs> yes.
yeah, something happened. At least. But can we really believe that one? I am, uh, yeah. Not so bad, is it? <coughs> so something is happening here in the in the mid uh, center. Something goes very wrong here. But now you see I have plotted from minus 100 to 100. So it's not a directly uh, the same as you have beneath. So we have to use an axis here as well. Uh, mm, didn't we have the axis up here somewhere? Yeah. Here. And then down here. <coughs> y-axis should go from 0 to t maximum. Now let's see if that one helps a little bit. <coughs> now we're talking. How does it compare? Yeah. Doesn't look too bad, does it? Then the final position, well, that shouldn't be a problem now. We have the end position for uh, the cars. That is each of them here. And then uh, calculating the local density should be a piece of cake. <coughs> so let's do that one as well. Then we are talking sub plot for one and now number one. I want the topmost uh, plot. So uh, then we can just plot directly. Well, here we should actually do it a little bit more neat. N is the length of my uh, car vector. Then we can write it in one single plot sentence. I want to plot the different uh, xk positions. And now I plot from 1 all the way up to the, not the last, but the one before the last, from 1 to n minus 1. Reason is I'm going to need uh, n plus 2, uh, sorry, n and n minus 1 to calculate the last density. So the density <coughs> should now be given here. So that should now be 1 divided by. And then we need xk from number 2 all the way up to the last one minus xk from number 1 up to n minus 1. So that's sort of a vector formula directly. And here, uh, this one now being uh, vectors, ah, yeah, I need a dot here to have 1 divided by. 1 divided by a vector is not possible, so you need a period there. <coughs> and I plot also these as red squares. Let's see if that one works. Ah, again, I forgot the window axis. He plots everybody from now minus 80 to 120. So that's not necessary. I want to have my window, which we had somewhere up here.
there we have it. Now let's see how he compares with the original. Yeah, not so bad. He has uh, obviously some different numbers with the length of the car or something, I don't know. So they are not exactly in the same positions, but at least you get the, you get the idea. So uh, this model actually, very simple, very easy, seems to be able to handle uh, the real problem quite well. No questions to that one? Okay, what about this one? The other side of the figure. How can we, how can we deal with that one? So now I want a continuous description of the problem. I want it uh, not as discrete uh, cars. I want it sort of as a continuous flow of cars. So uh, we have to rethink a little bit. <coughs> How can we deal with that one? Well, <coughs> if you take, um, say, a piece of the road here, and you have a yeah, delta x or whatever, a length of your uh, road, and we use this now as our uh, control volume. And then we ask, what's the change of the number of cars for such a control volume? Well, it's a one-dimensional problem, so the only thing that we have to worry about is whatever entries uh, from the left into this uh, control volume. And uh, here we have sort of the uh, density of the cars, then multiplied with the actual velocity that they are uh, moving with. So, I mean, if the velocity is zero, nobody enters. If the density is zero, nobody enters. So the product there should now be a number, the amount, the number of cars entering from the left. And then, of course, we uh, have to concern ourselves with how many is uh, getting out on the other side. Well, then you will have the same number if you had row u, both of them are known functions, continuous functions. If you had uh, row and u to the left, what do you have to the right? Then you have to take into account a possible change in the x direction here of uh, this quantity, this pro product, multiplied with the distance you are going, delta x. <coughs> so that should be uh, sort of the net uh, fluxes of cars out of your volume. It will be this part. If you have the same uh, number of cars entering and exiting, no changes but uh, it's the change there that is important. So this one equals net outflow or outflux of cars <coughs> out of my control volume. And of course this then has to balance the number of cars inside. How many cars do you have uh, inside uh, your uh, your uh, volume, well, inside here you will have uh, the density, that is the number of cars per length. Okay, then you just multiply with a length. So many cars do you have inside that control volume? And of course, the number of cars will change with time. Okay, then we are going to need 
time derivative. And of course, these two terms has to add up to zero. So what do we get? Total, the delta x can be uh, removed, so just a constant. So I will have the rho dt plus d dx of rho u equal to zero. Well, what do you know? That's the continuity equation in fluid mechanics. But there we say the density, then that's kilo per volume. So here it's just number of cars per length. But the logic, exactly the same. And also in fluid, we would say this is the transport of mass through an area, through a surface. Density multiplied with a uh, Velocity multiplied with an area will give you the mass flow. Here, it's the number of car flow. So the logic is exactly the same. So now, the problem is solve this one in the same manner as we did here. But now, not looking at individual cars, I want to look at these uh, quantities here. So solve that one numerically. We have to discretize in time and we have to discretize in, uh, in space. So yes, we will call this one a one-dimensional continuity equation for compressible flow. Or you can also call it with another name that you have learned that is, uh, that is uh, Burgess nonlinear equation. Okay, we will do that one after a break. <laughs>